Hello and welcome back to Hamilton of Crypto. Couple things, couple things here I want to talk to you guys about today. Obviously, Bitcoin has been on a tear. It has been banging it out of our wedge structure that we talked about in the past few videos, as you can see here, right? Lots of uh, involatile uh, action here, right? Just sideways for a quite a long time here on the daily. But what we can say here is we've come out of this pattern. There is a pretty beefy measure move towards the sky here if this does want to come through. Am I in a long yet? And should you be? Probably not just yet. Me personally, what I'm looking for here is essentially a daily close over this 55 EMA, as you can see right here. This is what we said in the last video, but now we're a bit closer. It's a little bit more valid, right? We were a little bit cautious saying, hey, we could get rejected here and we could potentially find a short uh, if that did happen. This short technically is still valid. So I'm not gonna actually get rid of this just yet because if we do get a major dump after uh, basically a, a huge tear up here of 4%, then uh, yeah, I mean, this will still be valid it would be somewhat of a capitulation event uh, going coming inside with the hash rate as well for bitcoin uh, potentially getting rejected here as these moving averages cross or get closer to crossing right if they do cross towards the upside uh, i will talk about that because these measure moves towards the sky actually become a lot more valid and as you can see here there are some serious serious gains to be made so yeah we're going to keep an eye out for that but it's a little bit far away here for us to really be considering right watch my last video if you do want to actually check that out and, uh, and and see what I mean there. But in terms of the immediate term, keeping this video short, not wasting you guys' time, what I'm looking for here over the next couple of days is, first of all, a daily close above this 55 EMA, as I just said, right? So if we close the daily, essentially above, uh, we're going to call it 17.2, uh, right? So essentially where we are right now, 17,200. If we close the daily above this point, what I'm going to look for first throughout the first half of tomorrow, if this is the case tomorrow, right? Uh, then, yeah, what I'm going to look for is a bit of a dump, a retest to begin with, right? And then breaking the high that we made today or however high we get today for a long entry. And if that does happen, we are looking very good. It's gonna be a pretty sustained trend. And as you'll find out on the hourly in a minute, uh, yes, there are areas that we can target here for uh, those bounces to occur, right? So yes, just in summary here, a close over 17.2, a retest, and then a break of the high that we've made. The high we've currently made right now uh, in today is essentially um, 17 to 65. So uh, yeah, if we do basically close around here, we get a little bit of a retest down. Uh, obviously, if we get a wick towards the upside, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, like relative probability that we do absorb that wick to the other side and have this retest that we're talking about, right? So if this does happen, and let's say we, we don't really move for, for the rest of today uh, and we do close above this, then yeah, we're looking to come down first. We're looking to break this high. And we're looking for an entry probably around 17.3, somewhere around there for a pretty nice trade towards the upside to say the least here. Uh, I know this says 3% on the chart here for this move, but because this four hour volume weighted ATR band here has come down since our last video, our take profit has also come down as well. This is still a pretty decent trade. If you look at uh, stock traders, if you look at Forex traders, these guys are targeting like 4% a year, right? 4% a year. So 2.46% uh, in one trade is pretty fantastic to say the least. And this is something that I will not be ignoring. And just again, the thresholds to enter this trade for me. And again, you guys can do what you want. If you have other strategies, let me know in the comments uh, because we're all here to share. And yeah, I'm here to help you guys learn how to look at the charts the right way, right? Analyze the the data that's given to you here from these charts. But yeah, uh, what I'm looking for here, just to clarify, close above 17.2 today, a retest downwards tomorrow, and then a break of whatever high is made today currently, uh, yeah, around 17.3 for an entry, and then closing that around 17.7 where this four hour volume weighted ATR band is. And one good sign here, just kind of zooming in on this four hour volume weighted ATR band is it is beginning to curl here. It is beginning to curl. So that descent here is starting to dwindle. Uh, the momentum on the descent is slowly dropping off, right? And that is typically a good sign for us because if we can get above this, then we start looking at these bigger measure moves, the big don bonds. And the measure move on this uh, on this beautiful wedge structure that we've, we've been looking at for the past few weeks, right, uh, does actually state that we can get up 
to as high as 18.8 here uh, onto the top side of this channel. And if we do get to the top side of that channel, that's when things start to get are very interesting to say the least, right? I will be expecting some kind of rejections and volatilities around 17.7. And if we do make it to 18.8, then uh, yeah, I'll be expecting a big high to be put in first, uh, maybe some more sideways in this area. And then if we do wanna continue up, we're looking at this 12 hour volume weighted ATR band, and there will be some shorter time frame trades in this area to say the least, because there will be very volatile times right here with this 12 hour volume weighted ATR band. Uh, and the fact that we're between the daily 200 EMA and the daily 200 SMA as well, right? So I'm expecting a lot of sideways, but not the bad kind of sideways, right? The good kind of sideways where it's actually trending uh, for, for a period of time. So maybe some kind of pattern emerges between 19.6 and 20,600. Again, very hypothetical. This could not happen, but if we do get up there, it's important to have this ready and have the analysis ready just in case, then we're gonna have a better idea and we're not gonna be stuck in this paralysis analysis that a lot of beginner traders will end up doing in this area, right? So yeah, that's what I'll be looking for here. And uh, that's pretty much the upside trades. The downside trades here on the daily, I'm not really too interested in anything besides 16.3 downwards, right? If we lose 16.3, then I'll be looking for a trade basically for 1%, uh, oh, sorry, 2% now down to uh, down to this four hour volume weighted ATR band on the lower side. That's pretty much around 16K. So yeah, from 16.3 to 16K, that's another trade that I think is quite probable if this does get rejected. And again, we have been going up for quite some time here. Uh, and one uh, last bit of data here for the daily is this CME. Um, you could make the argument that we have filled this gap here, right? So if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, CME is something that closes over the weekend because it trades with traditional markets markets. Bitcoin trades all the time, 24 seven, every day of the week, right? So uh, what will happen here is CME where all the money is from institutions is more likely uh, to be providing valuable data and probable data that we can analyze. But what really happens and what I'm talking about here with CME is when a gap forms like this, so when it closes on Friday, price moves, and then it opens on Monday and there's a gap, typically what you'll find here with a lot of assets is it will fill the gap. Whether that gap is filled within the next week, month, year, whatever, it typically does get filled, as you can see here in, the, in this, these last few gaps and stuff like that uh, between the days and, and these closes, right? Uh, we often get wicks into those areas. To fill the gap, all you really need is a wick to go inside. So you could technically say this is filled, but if we're looking at Bitcoin and the historical data, the, the filling of that gap uh, is, is often a lot bigger than this. So there is still that potential that we do come down to basically 16.8, that kind of area, fill the gap first before continuation or before uh, just a disgusting descent into the abyss with a capitulation event as well to accompany that, uh, most likely anyway, right? If we are looking at the hash ribbons, just before we do move on, looking a lot better. I did tweet this this morning, right? Uh, a bit of a breakout here in the last day and the hash rate, that's fantastic news. That means the miners are beginning to put more power into mining Bitcoin, not just power, but computing power, right? And that means typically, if you are looking at a direct correlation here between these two stats, so uh, the Bitcoin mining hash rate and the Bitcoin price, then uh, those are very, very, very tightly correlated on the long term, right? We're not talking about the hourly or the four hour, we're talking daily and weekly, right? So when we do get this breakout, uh, yes, it's very, very volatile with this raw hash rate, as you can see, but uh, just to see this come up and make a higher high here is fantastic and it's a good sign. What we're really looking for though is for these moving averages to cross and then we get a little bit of a long signal. Uh, will I just be going blindly long all in Bitcoin 100X with this? Absolutely not, guys. That is not the correct way to be trading, but uh, it's definitely something we should not be ignoring to say the least. Now, moving on to the hourly, uh, and we will take a look at the four hour as well, but I think the hourly is more valid to be talking about right now. Uh, so we can see here we have smashed it up here at the beginning of today. Uh, and yes, we have got above that uh, 60 minutes, so the one hour volume weighted ATR band, which is typically a great sign for a trend to start forming. Uh, another example here, the last time we did this is uh, when we did break over 17.5, as you can see here, a bit of resistance, and then bang, we slammed it up and we began a bit of an uptrend towards the upside, uh, which was, yeah, it kind of closed around that 18.2, 18.4 area, right? And that was a 4% move. So yeah, this kind of aligns with our daily, uh, our daily analysis as well. If we do uh, look at the present day, and we, and we look at this and we say, hey, yes, we have got above that volume weighted ATR band. We are coming down right now to potentially retest that bad boy, uh, which is currently at 17.1, right? Uh, but again, for this to be valid, we want the daily to actually close above 17.2. So uh, 
It's going to be an interesting one, ideally for the most healthy probable trade uh, in which we can make money here. We're looking for around 17.1 to be tested, so this, the, the volumated ATR band on the 60 minute, right? Uh, and then we come up, we finish the day somewhere around this area at 17.2, 17.3, and then the next day we maybe go sideways along this area and then continue the ascent up with a bit of momentum. And that's like the perfect golden trade that we can find here probably this week. Uh, if it doesn't happen and we do get rejected here, be watching the 171 area because typically as you can see here when we do get rejected on this volume weighted ATR band we do get pretty beefy uh, be beefy descents into the abyss here as you can see right uh, so the last time this happened just going back to our previous example yes uh, we completely fell off a cliff when that happened um, but it's equal and it's the same on the other side here for the hourly, right? So if we go to the lower volume weighted ATR band, we can see pretty much the same thing. Once we do get back over that, uh, we get pretty sustained trends in the other direction. So yes, be watching this. This is definitely the most key indicator to be taking a look at right now. Uh, and as time progresses, we will see how this goes. But the key point here is patience, guys. Uh, don't be rushing into any trades right now. I know it looks bullish. I know it looks tempting, but just be careful. Just be watching. I don't want you guys to lose any money here. I'm not taking a trade here. I'm not taking a trade. I'm waiting a day, right? A day, and then we'll see what happens. And if it looks good, it looks healthy, it looks like it's got momentum, then we are getting in and then we are making probable, consistent, good gains <laughs> here coming through. If you're enjoying this video, you're getting content from it, be sure to leave me a comment. Let me know if you have any questions about trading. The comment section is not for me, guys. It's not for me. I don't really care about engagement, right? It's, it's, a, it's for you. It's for you to ask me questions and I can provide you with answers. Uh, and then potentially you join up my community and we can all talk about trading together and help each other progress and make money because that's what it's all about at the end of the day right uh, so yes just in summary here i'm going to be watching this here today uh, if we do uh take you take you back in time here probably six to eight months uh to my webinar times right uh, the webinar strategy here actually states that we do get a one percent move up from where we are right now okay uh Am I taking this trade? No, and the reason for that, and this is why it's a little bit more advanced, right? Uh, we might still get this 1% move up, don't get me wrong, but uh, because these these candles have taken so long to get back to uh, this, this, uh, this 7 SMA moving average, right? The reason why I'm not taking this trade is because, yeah, these candles look very, very volatile. They don't look healthy. They don't look good on the hourly. So yes, uh, what, what's an example of a healthy version of this, it would be essentially this, right? We come up, right? And then we have a bit more of a, a rapid descent down to the moving average, and then we get the 1% off of that, right? Uh, in this case, this hasn't happened. It doesn't mean we can't go up here. We are in the middle of potentially changing a market cycle here for Bitcoin. Uh, potentially a bull rally starts this year, but I'm gonna hold my breath on that one and just wait, okay? And just wait, uh, and then I will let you guys know. So be sure to subscribe as well. I'll let you guys know uh, as soon as I believe that we are changed and and that, that kind of process where the volatility is ending and we are in more healthy swings uh, comes around. And yes, that's where the money is really made here. Uh, we've, we're basically in hard mode, extreme hardcore mode here for Bitcoin, which is very, very difficult to trade. The reason why the market makers move it like this is to get the traders confused, right? The retailer already gone. They're, they're already out of here. They're, they're done with crypto until it starts banging it up and they get in at the top again, right? Uh, what we're seeing here is completely counter trading a lot of traders, people that are educated in the space to make as much money as possible because there's no dumb retail money left, all right? So essentially what we're looking at here is a potential start of a trend, but we have to be cautious, we have to be careful because anything can happen right now with Bitcoin. Uh, and if, if we do get this capitulation that we've been talking about for the past few videos with the miners, uh, basically the miners are not making money for months and months and months on end. Some of these guys, these independent mining companies will end up going broke, defaulting on their debts, and then selling all their Bitcoin, selling all their miners, uh, and essentially, yeah, that, that's gonna leave a big tear on the market in which we can literally just fall to like 10K uh, on extreme examples of this as well, right? Another thing to, to be kind of uh, looking at here, uh, not putting too much weight on, but uh, we have to look at before COVID, right? And then we have to look at after COVID, right? Bitcoin is typically meant to be volatile and go up and down in these cycles, of course, right? But it usually returns back to a price 
plus inflation on the dollar because that's essentially all it is, right? It's, it's a hedge against inflation. So if we are looking at the price it was before COVID, it's probably around 8K. It's probably somewhere around that. And it did look like it wanted to go up before the COVID crash. But uh, yes, uh, all of that stuff happened. You guys know the, the story from there. <laughs> and uh, a lot of money was made for, for you guys, for me, for everyone, right? So that's fantastic. Uh, but that's not the case right now. So uh, if we if we are going to take that small piece of data and that small perspective and say, hey, we could return back to those prices, do not write off going as low as 10K, as low as 8K, potentially even as low as 6K here uh, on, a, on a major crash scenario. What does that mean if we do get down there? Is Bitcoin done? Is Bitcoin dead? Are we all screwed here? No. Okay. That's actually a beautiful time to be start uh, to start investing into Bitcoin and, and start uh, kind of DCAing, right? Dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin over a few weeks or months, right? I have so many friends that are already doing this. They said, "Hey, under 20k, I am in." That's okay. That's that's a plausible strategy. I know. Uh, I know. Um, what's his name? What is that guy's name? Michael Saylor, right? Uh, Michael Saylor and his company, they're actually, they bought a bunch of Bitcoin over the past month uh, because they believe that uh, it's, it's a great price to buy. And I, I somewhat agree with them. I'm just not an investor in Bitcoin. I'm a trader, right? So if Bitcoin's a hundred bucks, I will trade it for 25% each way. I don't really care what the price of Bitcoin is because I'm looking at the data and the charts, right? But in terms of cycles, in terms of all of this stuff, yeah, it does make sense to, to be eyeing this up for potential long-term investments. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm more of a, a breakout guy, right? As soon as we start breaking out, as soon as we start attacking those 18K, 20K areas, that's when I start to look at these longer-term trades, not necessarily investments, but trades towards the upside in which we can start targeting 8%, 10%, uh, sometimes as high as 20% here in these areas. And you guys know the hash ribbons uh, strategy is one of the best out there and, and when this this crosses a lot of the time we do get 120 percent increases in price for bitcoin so that's definitely something to look out for but that is going to be it for this video those are the trades i'm looking for i will see you in the next one have a fantastic day and goodbye from hamilton of crypto